Hello, I'm Eileen. Welcome back to my channel. Have you ever seen a trend and thought, I'm too old for that? Things that come to mind for me are those ridiculously high, like, 6-inch, 7-inch, heck, 5-inch, 4-inch heels, hoverboards. Uh, do you remember those wheelie sneakers? Yeah, I'm too old for all of that. Well, today we're going to be talking about my recent Sephora haul and try-on of the new brand Rare Beauty. I bought over $400 worth of Rare Beauty just so I could try it out because I like the idea of that soft, gentle, dewy look, but does it really work for mature skin or am I just too old for Rare Beauty? If that sounds good to you, stick around. But first, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad you decided to come and hang out with me today. And if you have not yet subscribed, I love it if you would hit that subscribe button. And also give this video a thumbs up. Okay, so Rare Beauty is a new brand founded by Selena Gomez, as you probably know by now, and was recently launched at Sephora. And they say that Rare Beauty is breaking down unrealistic standards of beauty, and that it's makeup made to feel good in, without hiding what makes you unique because rare beauty is not about being someone else, but being who you are. Now, I'm all about that. Now, Selena Gomez herself says, I think rare beauty can be more than a beauty brand. It can make an impact. I want us all to stop comparing ourselves to each other and start just embracing our own uniqueness. What could be better than that? So, that made me interested because I am of the opinion that the beautiful thing about makeup is there are no rules, right? So, rules, maybe not, but is it possible to be too old for a makeup trend? Let's talk a little bit more about the brand before we get into that. So one of the first things, of course, that I noticed was the packaging. I think it's beautiful. You've got this frosted glass, this very pale, it may look ivory here, but it is a very, very pale pink. Very, very pretty, simplistic, sleek, elegant. But the thing that really stands out when you look at it are some of these bottles that have this round top, or in some cases it's round all the way around, and in some cases it's more rounded on, one, on two sides and then sort of flat, more like makes me think of a Mentos. Does that make sense? So, they are interesting looking, and that was my first thought. And then I read that Selena did this deliberately. As you may know, Selena has lupus, and she designed the packaging to be easy for people with mobility issues to open. People like herself with lupus or arthritis or anything else like that. Now, as a woman of a certain age who also does have arthritis in my hands and there are times when gripping things can be difficult that made me really excited and just another reason why I wanted to give this brand a shot something else that I also found out about the brand is that a percentage of the sales are going to fund mental health initiatives so again yet another reason why I really wanted to check this brand out. Now, something that I've heard in various places, and I want to make sure that it is clear, is that the products are made in different countries, depending on the product. I've heard some people talk about, oh, products are made in Canada, I've heard products are made in Italy. Well, they're both right and both wrong. Depends on the product. For example, the foundation is made in Canada. In Italy, they make the primer, the concealer, and the luminizer. The blush, lip products, and brow pencil are made in Korea. And the brushes and the powder kit are made in China. So, depends on which product you're talking about when you talk about where they're made. So, let's jump into this. Let me give one, two caveats. First, it is not a full face because the collection, while well, she's got a lot of products for a brand new brand, there is no contour or bronzer, no mascara, and no eyeshadow. So, 
I had to improvise. And also, this is not a first impression. I did try to film the first impression a couple of days ago, but I found that when I try to talk and put my makeup on at the same time, you end up with a really long video. Apparently that's a skill I have to learn. So for now, I'm going to talk about the makeup and hopefully up in the corner here you will see as we're going through some swatches and some video of me actually putting the products on and we'll see how I ended up with this and we'll talk a little bit about the end about how it's worn because it has been several hours since I put it on and my final thoughts. Okay, let's get started. First step, primer. This is the Always an Optimist Illuminating Primer. It's a cooling water-based gel primer that smooths, hydrates, and illuminates skin, prepping you for makeup that looks and feels its best all day. Now there is a full size that is 28 milliliters and is $26. This is the mini size, which is 15 milliliters and $14. I figured that I have a number of primers already, and until I know whether or not I really like it, it didn't make sense for me to buy the full size until I've tried it out. If I really like it and go through it, then perhaps I'll buy the large one. But to use it, they say one to two pumps on clean, moisturized skin, blend it with the fingertips. They also say that if you want to skip your makeup, you can use the primer on its own, and it's made of ultra-fine pearls that bounce the light to create a more even skin tone. So that is our step one, the primer. Step two, or multi-steps actually, is the mist. This is the Always in Optimist 4-in-1 Mist, and this is 2.87 fluid ounces, or 85 milliliters, and retails for $24, and it is an ultra-fine all-in-one face mist packed with skin-loving ingredients to hydrate, prime, set, and refresh for an uplifting glow boost that lasts. You do have to shake it. You may be able to see here that it does separate, so you do have to shake it. Let me spray it so that you can see the mist. I'm going to spray it to the side, so obviously we don't want it getting on the lens, but I'll spray it once to the side and then I am going to do a quick refresh. Hopefully you can see that mist, but it is, it smells lovely. It's not heavily scented, but it does have a nice fresh scent and it is, as you saw, a very nice fine mist. So I'm really enjoying this so far. We'll talk a little bit more about it later, but that is the mist for hydrating, priming, setting, and refreshing. Okay, our next step would be foundation, and it is the Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation. This is $29, and it comes in a lovely glass bottle. It's weightless and breathable with all day, they say medium to full coverage that melts into skin to look and feel like you. I've seen some people complain that they were barely getting a medium out of it. To me, it really seems like it depends how much you put on. Um, as you hopefully be seeing if I figure out the video picture in picture, um, I use a fairly decent amount, but not a lot, and I got what I would consider a high medium coverage. Um, you can still see a little bit of my freckles through it, but I have a lot of freckles and they're pretty prominent. So. Um, I'm not unhappy, um, and I would even, in some cases, if I was going for a no makeup makeup look, want it to be even more sheer. So I was not unhappy. There are 48 shades of this foundation. There is a shade match on the Rare Beauty website and also on the Sephora site. 48 shades is a wonderful range for particularly a brand that's starting out. There are a lot of foundations that have been out for a lot of years that don't have nearly that shade range. So one thing that you do want to do is make sure you shake it. You can actually hear, hopefully, a little shaker bead that's in there. Um, there is a doe foot applicator, and it's a fairly large doe foot, and it is flat on one side. So obviously you're going to use the doe foot applicator, dot it on, or sweep it on depending on the level of coverage you're looking for. And so you can blend it with your fingertips, a foundation brush or a wet sponge, and they say less is more. Use a second layer if you need it, but only if you need it. 
So I'm in shade 140C. This is what matched me on the Sephora website, and I think it did a really good job. I'm very, very happy with the shade match. And I did use the Liquid Touch Foundation Brush from Rare Beauty. I think these are lovely brushes, so you'll see in the video that I'm applying using this. They do also have a multitasking makeup sponge that I didn't purchase. Um, it's a very unique shape. I was really interested in it, but the close-ups I saw of it looked like it was very um, unusual texture, kind of an open texture that was probably going to suck in a lot of product. And I don't use sponges a lot. Um, you will see me occasionally after I put my foundation on or something, sometimes at various stages if I just want to press things in or if I want to smooth something out a little more, I will grab a, a wet sponge, but I don't use them a lot. And this particular sponge didn't look like something I was going to be interested in, so I didn't purchase that. I went ahead and just got the foundation brush. They do say that it can be used with liquid creams and powders. It is uh, soft, silky, synthetic bristles. Um, I'm very happy with this. Some of you who have seen my videos before know that I am a big fan of makeup brushes, so you shouldn't be surprised that I got this. But I'm very happy with this, and I will be using this a lot with other products as well. Okay, after foundation, we move to concealer. And the concealer bottle does look a lot like a smaller version of the foundation, except that it is one that has the flat circle on top rather than the round one, and that does make it easy to open and close if you're having issues. Now, uh, this is the Liquid Touch Brightening Concealer. It is $19. Um, they say it is a lightweight hydrating concealer, giving you buildable coverage where you need it, while brightening skin with a radiant finish. And again, there are 48 shades. They do say on their website that the concealer shades are made to be the perfect match to the foundation shade. So, for example, I am 140C in the foundation, and they have a 140C in the concealer. Now I wasn't sure whether that meant that they were going to be the same shade or if it was going to be matched so that it would be slightly lighter because that's how I like my concealer and I know a lot of people do as well. But I took a chance and only got one because again if I didn't like it, I've already bought multiples of other products, I didn't want to have two concealers if it turned out I didn't like it. So I took a chance and only got the one, figuring if I needed to get a much lighter concealer then after the first use, I would just go out and use one of my other concealers. But it turns out that they are, I don't know if you can see it here, the concealer is a little bit lighter. They are complementary, they definitely go together, but the concealer is lighter than the foundation. They are not the exact same shade even though they are the same number. Now on the concealer also has a doe foot and a fairly large doe foot. Let me wipe the product off so you can see the shape. It is a fairly large doe foot and it's kind of odd shape. You can see it kind of comes almost to a point on the sides and then there's the angle here. And they say that that gives you a flat edge to sweep concealer in large areas or the pointed tip for more precise application. So that's a pretty neat idea. I don't know if other brands have done that. I don't think specifically come across it, so I thought it was pretty cool. In order to apply the concealer, I used their Liquid Touch Concealer Brush. This is $16. It is another, another synthetic brush with uniquely shaped bristles and a pointed tip. The pointed tip helps you get into those little nooks and crannies. And do you need to have their brushes? No. I'm sure there are plenty of other brushes, but as we've talked about before, I'm a fan of brushes, and I figured if I was going to give the line a really good, complete overview, I would go ahead and get the brushes as well. I'm very happy that I did. I'm enjoying both of these brushes very much. Okay, we've got the base foundation done. So the next thing would be in my routine, setting my under eyes. Now, they do have a powder in a, they have a, what they call the Blot and Glow Touch-Up Kit. 
This is $26. It is a refillable compact. It does have a mirror. And then down here you've got a powder puff and blotting sheets or blotting papers. Now I almost didn't buy this because I am fairly dry. Um, so oil is not usually something I've got to worry about that having to blot throughout the day. But while I am fairly normal to dry skin, I am also a woman of a certain age and sometimes I, when they say women don't sweat, they, they glisten. I glisten. So um, I'm a sweaty girl and sometimes a sweaty girl needs to clean up. So the blotting sheets probably will not go to waste, although I expect that I will use the powder puff more. Now, as you may have seen, assuming you've seen other reviews of this product, there's no powder in the compact. The powder is in the puff. And it took me a little while to figure this out. Not to figure out that it was in there because I already knew that, but to figure out how to make it work. I literally took it the first time that I figured it out and just crunched it. And once I did that, then I started to be getting the, the powder out of it. Just the first couple of pats, I was like, okay, it's not doing anything. Once I did that, I guess it, whatever seal or whatever was in there, Kind of broke out and so I was able to use the powder so this is a refillable compact so you have the blotting papers and the puff for freshening up on the go you can refill this so you don't have to keep replacing the compact you can buy the blotting papers and there are 100 sheets in here those are five dollars for a refill the powder puff is fifteen dollars I like something like this for my purse just in general now I've got a little compact with a mirror. I can touch up with powder, fix if I need to touch up around my eyeliner or deal with smudging or lipstick, whatever. And it's got a nice little mirror. And I think it's really pretty. Um, the only issue for me is that this is not really the kind of powder I like to use to set my under eyes. So for me, this would not be enough of a powder. I think it's good for what it is but I want a setting powder at the very least. I understand this whole, the whole dewy face. We don't completely set the whole face because we're going for that fresh and shiny young thing look, um, but at the very least, I need to set my under eyes or I'm gonna be dealing with creasing and smudging and everything else all day. So while this is good for what it is and I'm glad I have it and I will use it, I need more. So, after I set my eyes, the next thing for me is blush. So, one thing that they said on the Rare Beauty website is that they suggest that you apply your blush under your foundation for an ultra-natural blushed look to create an underlining healthy glow. Yeah, I didn't do that. I, I did it, I tried it the first time, but by the time I had the foundation on, it's not that things moved around, it just, I wasn't getting enough blush. I like as you, you know, hopefully can tell, sometimes these lights, you know, make things a little more um, sheer than they are, but I like to know I'm wearing blush. I'm a, I like to be a little heavy handed with the blush. And when I put the blush under the foundation, I kind of lost that and I ended up having to put the blush on again. So it's a suggestion. If you're going for that, I'm not wearing makeup. I'm just healthy look give it a try but I went ahead and put the blush on after my foundation okay so the blush is the soft pinch liquid blush they're $20 each and I've got three of the eight shades it is a weightless long-lasting liquid blush it blends and builds for a what they say a soft healthy flush there are matte and dewy finishes as I said, there are eight shades, four of each, four matte, four dewy. And I've got, let's get these in the right order here. This is, this is Happy. This is a dewy, cool pink. This is Grace, which is a matte, bright rose mauve. And Bliss, a matte, nude pink. Originally, I had just gotten happy and bliss and I decided I wanted something just a little bit more berry toned, something a little bit more false so for me that was grace. So these are the three. 
Um, and I believe you'll see in the video that I started out, I used Grace for the most part, and then I've touched just a little bit of Happy on the apples of the cheeks. But just to show you, this has a doe foot applicator, and it is a fairly large doe foot applicator, and again, it's got an interesting look to it. These are highly, highly pigmented. So as you, you see in the video, a couple of dots, and then blend it out. You can always add more, but it's really hard to take away blush, so don't go ham at first. Get a feel for them, and then see. If you want more, great. If you're one, you know, if you're like me and you like a, you want your blush to be prominent, then go for it. But even me, I went with a little bit darker blush, and then just little, literally two or three drop, two or three very tiny dots, not big dots, because it's very ultra pigmented. I will have this for life. This will be buried with me because I will not go through this. So, um, you will, these will make a reappearance as we're talking, but those are the blushes. So as I said, there are no contours and bronzers right now in the line, um, but I, I need a little help. I need a little bit of sculpting. I need a little something, something. So in keeping with the all cream formula, I grabbed a Fenty contour matchstick, and this is amber, and that's what I have used. Just a you know a little bit of a little along the jawline, a little under the cheekbones, and a little along the hairline, just to give me a little definition. Yep. So next, highlighter. The highlighters in this line are called the Positive Liquid Light Luminizers. It is a silky second skin liquid highlighter. It creates an instantly dewy, buildable glow while also nourishing skin so it looks on the bright side all day. There are eight shades and look at the size of these babies. <laughs> As I said, there are eight shades. I've got two. I originally got one and then went back and got another because I liked it so much. Um, this very soft pink is Enchant, which if you know anything about me, if you knew me in real life, you'd know that if it's if I can relate it in any way to Disney and the Disney princesses, uh, I'm chances are I'm I'm kind of sucked in. So Enchant, and it's a pretty soft pink. I didn't have a chance. And then the second one that I got is Enlighten, and this is a champagne. Um, another great big doe foot. Let me wipe some off so you can see the slant on it. So, um, I'm not going to tell you to go sparingly on these because, you know, if you want to be a sparkly fairy princess, go for it because, you know, I do. Um, but they are, they're pretty, pretty amazing. Um, let's see if I can throw in just a little bit more so you can see. I can, you know, I'm going to be Ziggy Stardust by the end of this and if you're old enough to get that reference. Thank you. But uh, so as you can see, they are pretty pretty amazing. If you're a I used to say that oh, you know, the highlighters are you know, they're not really for people my age. And uh, you know what? I, I want to be a sparkly fairy princess. And as, uh, as my channel title, you know, My Chosen Life, came from a discussion where I uh, realized that I got more life behind me than I likely have in front of me. And if I want to be a sparkly fairy princess, I'm going to be a sparkly fairy princess. So that's my thought on wearing sparkle and highlight. But I love these. Do not be surprised if I get more of these. Um, they are $22 a piece, so it may take me a little while to get another one, although I think I may have a Sephora gift card that's burning a hole in my pocket. So, um, But yes, I love these, starting with the eyebrows, the Brow Harmony Pencil and Gel. So this is, on one side, we have a triangular shaped retractable brow pencil, and on the other side, is the brow gel. They're supposed to be, you know, complementary shades. 
They say you create a naturally defined brow. There are eight shades. Um, now, I don't know about you, but this shade seems awfully dark to me for soft blonde. Now, some people may like that. Um, for me, I'm feeling like this was a whole lot of brow for me. Um, they also suggest that you backcomb the pencil against the brow hairs to lay the product onto your skin, fill in the gaps, and then use the gel to smooth the hair back into place. Um, yeah, I tried that the first time, and I ended up with... I, I, don't, I couldn't even give you a reference. It was so appalling. It was just a lot of brow. So yeah, this to me is a shade problem. For me, this is not soft, soft blonde. And also, the, um, the gel is... The only way I can describe it is it feels thick. Like, I did my makeup hours ago, and I can still feel like... If you like your brow cemented in place, this will do it. But for me, it's more than what I like in a brow product. So, consistency-wise on the gel, it was a little much, and the color... Yeah, it's just... I mean, it's probably not as awful as I feel like it is, but... You know, I feel like I got Groucho Marx brows or something. It's, yeah, no. They do have a liquid eyeliner, and it is the Perfect Strokes Matte Liquid Liner. Uh, it's $19. It is only available in black, uh, an Easy Glide waterproof liquid eyeliner. They say with over a thousand vegan bristles to lay down a long-lasting ultra-black line with perfect precision every time. I didn't buy it. I don't use liquid eyeliners. Um, I'm hopeless at them. You, it would look, it's like a kid who can't stay in the lines. It's just awful. I went ahead and just grabbed a pencil liner, which they don't have in the line right now, and it's just a, a brown liner, and I just use that. Um, there are also no mascaras, and there are no eyeshadows in the line. Um, that to me, I I need a little something at the eyes if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be putting on blush and I'm gonna be putting on lips. I I need a little balance there. So what I did since there are no eyeshadows and I didn't want to break out a palette because then the look tends to become more about the eye eye palette than it does about the whole product. So I grabbed first the contour stick that I used, smudged a little of that in the crease just to give a little definition. Then I took the lightest of my blushes, this is the Bliss, and I put a little bit of that um, sort of above, in the crease and a little bit above. Um, and then I felt like, okay, it needed a little bit more, so I got a little nutty and I mixed a little a tiny dot of Happy, a tiny dot of Grace, and some of the um, luminizer, and I believe I used Enlighten, I'll have to look up there, and I mixed, it was actually more of this than either of those colors, mixed it together to get sort of a shimmery pink, light pink going on, and that's what's on my lid. Um, and then I did take the Enlighten again and just put that along the brow bone, just to give me a little something around the eyes. Nothing crazy, but just, oop, just a little definition there. So. Um, I'm not saying that these are advertised to be used around the eyes or that they are eye safe, but that's just what I did. Um, again, there's no mascara, so I just threw on a couple of coats of the new Marc Jacobs uh, mascara. It just happened to be a trial size that I've been using, so I just grabbed that one. Now, in terms of lips, there are a couple of options. They have a lip balm, and they are the With Gratitude Dewy Lip Balms. They're $16, a hydrating lip balm with a kiss of dewy, buildable color. Looks and feels so good that your lips will thank you. There are eight shades, including a clear one. And these are actually very pigmented for a lip balm. I would actually think of them that they're more like a bullet lipstick than a lip balm. If they're nourishing and hydrating, great, but they're a lot of color. Like, they're not a little sheer wash of color like you get with most lip balms, so... I did purchase three of the eight, and the first one is Blessed, 
or blessed. And that is a bright coral. And next we have empathy, which is not this one. Empathy, which is a rose mauve. Very much my type of color. And the last one is compliment, which is a muted berry. Um, I'm all about berries for the cooler months, so those are the bombs. Um, I'm not wearing that today. Um, what I just decided to go with is the liquid lipstick. And we don't know each other well enough yet for you to know that I'm not a fan of liquid lipstick. I'm especially not a fan of matte liquid lipsticks. So these are the Lip Souffle Matte Lip Creams. And this is an air whipped lip cream that hugs with rich melted in color and nourishing hydration that won't weigh you down. And there are 12 shades. I have four of them. I started out with two. And I went back and got two more. That should tell you something about how much I like this matte liquid lipstick. I'm still stunned. So our colors are Ascend, a deep fuchsia. Can, can I just point out that I love the fact that the barrels on these are the color of the lipstick so that you can tell right from the barrel which one you want to grab. So again, Ascend, deep fuchsia. Courage, is it this one? Yes, Courage which is a nude mauve, heroic, a true berry, and strengthen a dark, cool red. And no one is more surprised than I am of the fact that I'm loving these. They are so comfortable. They don't dry down to the point where they dry out your lips like most mattes that I've tried. They're, to me, this is more comfortable than the lip balms. They're, they're soft, they feel wonderful, the color lasts, they don't dry down completely, so it's not like some of the matte lipsticks that, you know, you got to chisel them off at the end of the day. They do come off, like, you know, yeah, you do get some color. So, but they're not... Um, gone in, you know, half an hour like a gloss. These I'm enjoying more than the lip balms and nobody's more surprised than I am by that. There are no lip liners, there are no lip glosses with this um, and there are no bullet lipsticks other than these dewy lip balms that to me are more bullet lipstick than lip balm, but we've covered that already. Let's do a quick summary of what we thought. It's been four or five hours since I did my makeup and I'm gonna grab a mirror here um, it is not I mean I've got lines I'm 54 years old I have you know I've got wrinkles and things but it's not particularly settle, settling into my lines anywhere um, it's not you know I, I don't see it getting patchy or anything um, and you know I've filmed multiple videos, I chased a cat, I dealt with picking up a box full of stuff that the cat knocked over. Um, so, you know, I've been doing some things other than just putting on my makeup and sitting here and now filming this video. It has been a while. Uh, I've changed clothes a number of times and things like that. So, um, and I have not touched up anything other than a couple of times that I sprayed this and the lips. I haven't, uh, haven't touched up anything else. Um, I would like to see things added to the line. I'd love to see a bronzer contour product, um, a setting or finishing powder, eyeliner pencils, and multiple colors. Um, and, you know, I'm never going to not advocate for eyeshadows. We come down to, am I too old? Is it possible to be too old for a makeup trend? Um, I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. Like I said, the, the brow product is not my favorite and uh, not one I will use a lot, but Everything else, I'm pretty happy with. So, tell me what you think. Is it possible to be too old for a makeup trend? Was Rare Beauty designed for pretty girls with clear skin smiles? 
if you get that reference, you're old like me. Um, or is the beautiful thing about makeup the fact that, like Calvin Ball, there are no rules. So if you feel pretty, if you're happy with how you look, if it's what you want to wear, if you feel like you're expressing yourself, if it brings you joy, that's what makeup's all about. So I don't think it's possible to be too old, at least for this trend. I'm not going to say that there's never going to be a trend that I'm going to look at and go, yeah, no, I'm too old for that. <laughs> anyway, um, let me know what your thoughts are. Have you ever felt too old for a makeup trend, or are you feeling like me? If it makes you happy, wear it. Have you tried anything from Rare Beauty? It, let me know down below what your thoughts were. Were there products that I liked that you didn't? Or products that I didn't like or didn't try that you thought were great for you? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed today's video, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help the channel, helps get the video into the YouTube algorithm so other people can see it. And while you're down there, if you haven't done so already, I really would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. And follow me on Instagram. My Instagram information is down in the description box. Thank you for spending your time hanging out with me today. Please stay safe, be kind to yourself and others, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.